<coughs> it's like school speech. <laughs> Maintain eye contact. <laughs> I want to do a quick video about the latest modification I've done to the Navara, which is a new rooftop tent I have up on top there. I got it put on a couple of weeks back. For the last probably four or five years of camping now, I've used only the swag and that's it. I've always sort of looked at rooftop tents and wondered and decided and should I give it a go and I thought that I may as well finally give a rooftop tent a go because these are a real like uh, lightweight touring setup and see what I think of it. I've only had one night away camping in the rooftop tent so far so I haven't had too much experience in it but I did put a few pictures, I've been putting a few pictures up on Instagram and Facebook and I've just been bombarded with a bazillion questions from all different people about the rooftop tent and what I think of it and so many different questions on it so I said I would just film a video on it, a little 10-15 minute, minute video and run through setup pack up how it works all the different things now i wrote everything down on a piece of paper because i put a questionnaire out on my instagram and said everyone give me the questions they want to know so i sort of wrote down all the main points here that way i can remember everything cover everything otherwise guaranteed i'll forget half of it now just to start with and cover the basics it's a wildlands 1.2 meter rooftop tent from drifter they're stocking and selling them now the size, it's the 1.2 meter one, they also come in a 1.4 meter size as well, so this is a slightly smaller size. Weight, it is 52 kilos in the 1.2 meter, and then the 1.4 meter is 59 kilos. So I've gone with the lighter, smaller one, and it still uh, sort of suits my needs. Price, 2,500 for the smaller one and 2,600 for the 1.4 meter one. Now the dimensions of it, it is 16 centimeters high. It's obviously 1.2 meter wide. What's that, 120 centimeters wide. And then length is 2.2 meters long. So 220 centimeters long. I'll just quickly run through the mounting of it and then we'll set up. Now to mount it, you do need some sort of roof rack system on your roof to mount it on, but they can sort of get it on most different systems. So I've got the Rhino, just a flat platform Rhino rack, which they were able to mount it onto. Um, it can be mounted on just like your bars across your roof, sort of depending on uh, even like the more the mesh style ones, they can mount them on there as well. There's like a clamp on system, so they can kind of work with most things that you have. If you don't have anything on your roof, you will need to get something on there. Obviously the bars being the lightest, easiest, cheapest option. Put a couple of those bars on and then it can be clamped onto that. Now to clamp it onto your roof, I've kind of got these four brackets that wedge up under your existing roof rack and then tighten it down onto, onto the top of that. And they're just these wing nuts that tighten it up and make it nice and secure there. So it's relatively easy to uh, get on and off I guess. Alright, I run through setup. Setup is super quick and easy and that's what I really like about it. So there's basically four latches to undo and then it's set up. So you start with your two ones on the front here, pull them down, loosen it. And then you got a latch on the front there. Latch on the back. So four latches and then you just push it up there it goes grab the middle bar and pull it out and that's sort of the main thing of it set up now there's three steps you need to do from that point so one is to lengthen the side bars there's one And the other, these straps 
tighten down. And then we just need to hop up inside it and um, do the spreader bar. All right, now to get up inside it, you've got a couple different options depending on your vehicle and your setup. It comes with a ladder, which you hook on here and just climb straight up the front of it. Now, if you have a ute or something like I do, what I've been doing is you can also get in either side. So rather than like setting up the ladder, I've just simply been climbing in the tub and then stepping up into it, which is much easier. I haven't actually even used the ladder yet, but I'll get that out for this video. So it comes in a bag, sort of little compactable ladder, and then it just pulls up open. You got your hooks there. All right, got your ladder set up, which is obviously adjustable for different heights, depending on where your car is and how high your car is, if you got a taller or a lower four wheel drive. And then the last step to sort of, like it's all set up, but the last step to spread it out properly is you've got uh, just a bar up in here. So you just kind of push that out and then clamp it tight. And there it is all spread out. Zip that back up. And that's your tent all set up. So you're just setting it up casually, doing that takes one and a half to two minutes depending on how quickly you do it but honestly it's very quick and easy to set up and then as i said the way that i've sort of used and i'll probably just use i'll see how i go if i want to use the ladder or not but it's got big open sides either side so you've got the main front entrance both sides so it's probably going to be easier for me to just come up this way and um climb in through here Now just to answer a couple of quick questions now that it's set up. First one being wind noise when driving. You definitely do notice a little bit more wind noise with it up there, but I assume you would with all rooftop tents. It's probably a little bit more than when I had the swag and chainsaw up there. Honestly, with a big four wheel drive, when you've already got a roof rack that's noisy and you got the snorkel blasting in your ear and you got your big tires and like a big four wheel drive on the road it just kind of blends in with everything else anyway and turn some music on and you forget about it real quick fuel economy i don't know i'm hopeless at keeping an eye on fuel economy i don't know what the fuel economy on this car is normally let alone once i added this on whether it made any difference so i don't know now inside the rooftop tent it's nice and simple nice and basic you have a pocket here and a pocket at the other end as well uh, you have a light strip that runs along here which has got a USB so you can hook that up with a little power station if you've got it or if you want to wire it permanently you can so you will be able to run wires up through um, the floor of this thing and then each of the three windows exits entries whatever you want to call them you got like a main um, canvas polyester type thing I think the material for this is all polyester so this is made from the shell is aluminium this is all polyester and then the floor is vinyl so this has a soft floor not a hard floor which is what they did to keep the weight down on them but yeah your windows have got a polyester opening and then a like a mosquito mesh net thing as well now the big thing that a lot of people asked when they saw i had this was can you pack it up with bedding inside yes you can not a massive amount but you can fit a decent amount in here it just um, if you put too much it's going to get harder and harder to close but I can comfortably close it you hardly notice the difference with a sheet in here and my big double uh, sleeping system so it's like a big doona really it's two big sleeping bags in it I haven't tried with pillows I was gonna bring pillows today but silly me forgot um, but I think if you had two pillows and you sat them in the middle, it would close down fine. I don't think it would be a problem because it's still quite easy to close with all this bedding in here as is. So you can definitely fit some bedding in here. You can also fit the ladder if you lay it flat across the middle, but that will also depend on how much bedding you have. So if you have a lot of bedding and then you try and put the ladder in as well, you might be pushing your luck a bit. But the ladder can fit by itself with a little bit of bedding or you can fit a heap of bedding and no ladder. So kind of yeah, work, work that out how you want it. Now in regards to room, a couple of people asked me to lay down in it so you could see how much room it has in it. Now I'm about six foot. 
and I can comfortably lay down with my legs fully stretched out and I'm not touching it because it was 2.2 meters long but you probably lose um, a, a, bit, a bit of that on the actual internal dimensions but you're still about a good two meters on the internal dimensions so there's plenty of room for me to lay down comfortably and the 1.2 I was a bit worried about whether it would fit two adults or not because I was never going to go the 1.4 but you can see here like if I'm laying on one side there's plenty of room there for a second person we've slept in it with two adults in here and there's plenty of room like it's comfortable you're not really squished in here the 1.4 would give you that little bit more room but I don't think it's worth it for the weight and that little bit of extra stick out it will get in your vehicle this is quite comfortable and then the other big one is mattress comfort similar to a swag I would say you can't like you're not digging into it you can't obviously feel the bars um, or feel like you're squishing through it or anything but it's not like a thick comfy mattress like some of your other rooftop tents because this is more like a small lightweight touring one so you're not going to get the luxuries of a big tent so it depends kind of what you want to prioritize but I'm gonna have to test it on like a big 10 day trip and see how it goes longer over time but as I said we've had like a night or two on it here and there and it's quite it's quite comfy just just for the night similar to a swag um, swag mattress so I'm just going to show the mattress as I said I got a double uh, sleeping system there got the sheet and then there's your mattress underneath now it has two layers um, it has a top, so it's a 50 mil mattress, so it has a top 50 mil foam mattress layer, whatever. And then it has a harder, um, I don't know what the material is, but a bit of a harder mattress there underneath because it doesn't have a hard floor. So that way it stops you feeling the bars or anything underneath because it's just like, as I said, underneath it's bars with a vinyl material, material across them. But it's like super cozy and comfy up here. There's a fair bit of room, like it's enough room to sort of kneel up or sit down. You obviously can't stand up in it. Um, heaps of ventilation. You got the three big openings, so you get plenty of air and light through here. If it was raining, you'd probably have to close the side ones, but then you'd be able to leave this front one open because it leans down. The rain's not going to come in through that one, but. I'd say you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to keep these side ones open during the rain but I haven't actually been in it during the rain yet so I'm not too sure how it handles wet weather and rain but it's all set up so it all runs off nice and easy and then where it runs down the sides here um, it's got holes in the edges like the edges are all open so the water can just run straight out of it now a couple of quick things before I pack it away. The first one being that the roof of it is separate to the actual tent. So the idea, I don't exactly know how it works, but the idea behind it is it keeps all the condensation down. So that way it's not all condensating through your tent, it's not getting everything wet in there. That allows the breeze to flow in through there and uh, keep it all nice and dry. And same with the bottom, because you don't have a hard bottom, it allows the wind in under there, which may keep it a bit cool like a bit cooler in or keep it maybe cooler in some of it maybe a little bit too cold in winter i don't know i don't think it'll make much difference because it's got that vinyl floor but it just means that uh you're not getting moisture in under there as well it keeps it all nice and dry but everything's sort of all separate from the actual hard shell the other thing is on the sides here you've also got um well there's shoe pockets so when you climb up can put your shoes in there and keep it nice and dry. They got like a mesh backing and a uh, protective front, or you could sort of put whatever you, else you want in there, really. All right, that's just about all the main things I think. I'm sure I forgot things to run through, but hopefully I got the majority of it. Um, we'll pack it down now. We'll quickly set a timer as we pack down. We'll just cruise and see how we go for time. As I said, they're pretty quick and easy to set up and pack up. Start the timer. Just obviously close your side windows up, which I already had closed. And then you need to undo your spreader bar, so loosen that up. You climb down. Um, you just push all this stuff in. You loosen these straps on the side. Bring them down. Bring that one down. 
push that in grab that you just need to make sure you bring all the sides in as you go fold these in fold that in tuck your strap in there bring it down a bit more my timer down so you get the ladder out of the way And I normally close the side ones first because they are a little bit easier to close than these ones. Latch that down. Sort of shove it in as you go. Come around to the front one. Push it in. Get them down. So as I said, depending on how much stuff you have in there, it just gets a little bit harder to get down. The more you put in there but that's it all done time is just on just over two minutes couldn't really see my face at the end then after i was packing it down but the timer was uh just under two minutes just over two minutes sorry it was like two minutes and five seconds now a couple of last things while it's packed up um it's obviously got a hard aluminium top now it does have these roof bars which you can choose to mount or not mount on top meaning you can still put your surfboards or swags or whatever you want time down on top they just um four bolts in the side here bolt them in nice and simple they just got like little slots they slot in and then uh tighten them up and you can also drill into this roof because the roof is separate to the tent so you can mount like a solar panel and your max tracks or whatever you want to along here I've, i don't know if i will yet or not just because it's going to add more weight up on top so you've already got that 50-ish kilos. I don't know if I want to keep adding more and more weight, but I'll see how it goes. The option is there if you need it. And then with drilling into it, you can also drill into the side. I know I've already seen it done a couple of times. I'm not going to do it. My awning already mounts fine on the other side as it is. You're obviously not going to mount something this side because that's where it folds up, but you can mount on the other side a awning. That uh, You can get brackets that sort of make up your brackets or get brackets or whatever and drill them in the side and you can mount an awning off it so yeah a couple of things because i haven't used it much i'm gonna need more time this is more just like a what it is and why i like it and why i got one kind of thing not so much a review of it because i haven't had it enough time i don't know how i don't know things about how it holds up over time i don't know too much about it in wet weather because i haven't had it in wet wet weather yet um, but it all drains, it all runs off at fine. Obviously, if super wet packing up when it is raining, uh, you may get some moisture in there, just like you do with your swag if you're packing that up in the rain. We'll have to see how that goes. But we're uh, pretty happy with it so far for the night or two. I have a couple nights I've had in it. Hard forward driving, I'm not sure how much of a difference it'll make with that weight up on there. I've done a little bit of forward driving in it and I didn't notice it done like just some beach driving and some easier lighter tracks feel like flexing and stuff i didn't notice it at all when you're on really steep hills and angles uh, i have to see how that goes you may notice that bit of extra weight up there but with the swag and chainsaw and stuff it's i sort of already had a good 30 ish kilos up there so i sort of added 20 onto that um so i'm sorry i'm already used to working with a little bit of weight up there Need to pack up this ladder which just has these little clips. It's quite cool how it comes down. And it folds into your nice, just don't jam your fingers. Jeez. Um, folds down, nice compactable ladder there. You put back in the bag. Rooftop tent verse. What I'm used to in a swag, I don't know yet. <laughs> I did really, I loved it. The night went away, it's so cool. Like we spent a night in a few nights ago on the beach. Like you wake up in the beach, up off the ground. You're overlooking the sunrise out through the window there. It was pretty cool. Have to see how I like it sort of more over the time of, of a rooftop tent versus swag situation because I've slept in the swag for years now. But I went with this one just because it's so quick, easy 
to use, to set up, to pack up. It's not like a big fancy one. It's not over complicated. It's just a nice lightweight touring rooftop tent that kind of suits what I do. I'm not going to get the comforts of like a big, one of those big alley cabs or something, but I don't think that would really work for what, for what I'm doing. I'm better for saying small, light, easy to set up, pack up like this and keep that weight down. Hopefully that video sort of answered the main questions and run you through how it works. As I said, it's not really a, a review of it because I haven't had it long enough. It's more just a first look and to try and answer the bazillion questions I got on it because there seems to be a lot of people interested in these because they're sort of a bit, bit of a new one on the market. But yeah, I think I got all my questions done. About two minute pack up time, two minute setup time. It's quite quick. Yeah, I'll give a few comments and reviews on it over time through my videos as we take it away on trips and experience it in various conditions and things and see how it goes. But um, I do really like it so far, the night or two I've had away in it. And I'm keen to sort of test it out on the big proper trip. It is um, 1.2 wide, obviously, because it's 1.2 meter. No, now I've changed like numeracies. Okay, hang on. So that'd be one. Would that be 160? Would be 100? Would be 16 centimeters high. Hey. And then they're just tightened up by wing nuts. So. No. Now clamped onto your roof. As I go, I'll just cruise casual pace. Um, but yeah. Cool. <coughs> Dimensions, don't know. That's helpful. I think I took a photo. And you're folding it down in the wet. You may. Um, yeah. I saw you smack. <laughs> Put that side on. Well, oh, forgot to take the ladder off. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Meant to get the ladder out. That was silly. <sighs> that was probably why it was so hard to go down. Yeah. Ah. Oh, yes. Cancel that silliness. Oh.